Okay, um, even my voice is also clear, right now? You are able to hear me? Yeah, okay. Okay, so what I was telling is um, uh, how to open a new query window and how to write queries from the basic point. Yesterday, uh, we have seen about few comparison between our SQL and MBS. So we have seen enough of examples uh, how to write MBS. So we'll we'll start from the basic now how to write from the scratch uh, the queries. So for that, you have to open a new query window in, through your SSMS. Um, how to do that? Uh, go to Object Explorer. Uh, when you right click on any of the databases uh, that you wanted to write, right? You can go to New Query Window and go to MDX. And DMX is um, uh, if you want to write any data mining queries or ex expressions. So in that case, you'll go for DMX expressions. And XMLA is nothing but uh, you know DDL command as as uh, as we have in uh, SQL. We have DDL commands, right? Like uh, alter table, alter uh, um, you know um, deployment queries, uh, altering the partitions, so adding new roles. So those uh, admin related or DDL uh, definition related activities can be done using XMLA. Whereas the MDX will be used mostly for querying your data. So we'll, I will be talking about this XMLA and MDX. No? DMX. Uh, is nothing but a data mining extension. Tomorrow I'll I'll talk about a little bit about data mining also. Okay, for now I will start. Uh, I will I wanted to write MDX, so I will select MDX. So it opens up a new query window for me. New query window for me, in which you can see in the right in the left hand side uh, you can see um, the metadata of that cube. Metadata in the sense you, you can you can see the a list of dimensions measures so that it will be easy for you to drag and drop on the screen and you can see how many cubes it has yeah, it has many many cubes and many perspectives as well so i will select for my example i will select adventure works and the metadata you are able to see all the metadata and if you wanted to select a particular measure group also you can see the reason why they provided this measure group is let's say for example uh, let's say if i select internet sales it will automatically adjust your uh, below pane here. You see, only related dimensions will be shown up. The other unrelated dimension will be eliminated. So to avoid the confusion for uh, any SQL, I mean index writer, oh, we it it has been uh, given. So for now, I will select all, and I know the relation between each of the major groups. So I will select all to to see all my dimensions and fact tables here. Okay, uh, let's let me start with the simple uh, query. I will. As as like in SQL, we have a select class here, and we have from class here, and we have also where class here. Where class is optional, but the mandatory classes are mandatory classes are select and from. As like in uh, SQL, it is similar to SQL. So now the question is, from where you need to pick? And if it is from, if, if it is a, a SQL, it should be a table name. But here it should not be a table name; it should be cube name. Okay, the cube is adventure works. I will drag and drop here. Okay, now select star. I haven't put anything here. It's still empty. And from adventure works. Okay, this is a simple query. Let me execute and see what is the result. Oh, excellent! I I got a result. See, you might uh, have some doubt. I did not mention anything here, but still you are able to get something here. What is this? This is called the default measure that we have set in our cube. Okay, if you go back to cube for some moment, um, you can set the default measure here. Uh, let me go back into the solution and see how the default measures can be set. Go back and select the cube. And if you press the F4, the properties, see the default measure is defined, and that is a reseller sales amount. So that is what you are able to see. If I don't mention any default measure, it will automatically take the top one or first measure and display it for you. And okay, so what I'm trying to say here is. Um, 
so you it is not mandatory to mention anything in the select class but whereas in um, sql you have to mention one or the other columns of some some column to to be returned so but here it automatically it takes the default measure whatever defined in the sql okay for now i don't want the default measure i want um, internet sales amount total internet sales amount okay let me go to measures group i don't know that you know that uh, um, uh, construct like uh, measures dot how how to do some but so that is why i am using this drag and drop functionality first initially go with the drag and drop functionality then you are aware of that uh, you know the constraints how to how to navigate to that particular uh, member measure you, you can type in so now i will use this navigation go to internet sales internet sales amount yeah so you see here automatically it forms a construct for you it it starts a measure dot internet sales amount okay so all the measures can be accessed using this measure keyword and the after dot you have to press you have to type in the actual measure name okay okay now i have mentioned something and where you wanted to show so we have two things here we have columns and rows here so where you wanted to measure the uh, uh, represent or put this particular measure so we have columns and rows here i will put i wanted to see this measures on columns okay zero we put zero or you can type in the column c o l u m n o or we have other options called uh, access of zero okay, this way also you can do let me execute now okay now you are able to see the total sales amount it is total sales amount means uh, since i don't have any slicer on other access it will give me the entire amount total entire uh, total amount in the cube total inter we don't have any slicer we don't have any thing okay now we are able to get total internet sales amount so this is a full amount so what is my next point with this how can i um, uh, write any report out um my question now is how to you know slice it by or or uh, slice slice or dice it by a diamond simple simple question so how to answer this question okay now how to use the dimension since i have my measures in the axis zero that means columns i will use the dimensions in the other uh, i will use this dimension in other axis okay let's say for example i wanted to slice by date okay open the date uh, date in the sense how how uh, by year wise let's say open calendar we have a calendar uh, uh, member calendar attribute here drag so i'll select that and drag it on the come on so now i have date uh, day and under date dimension if you see that construct how it form under date dimension we have a calendar year attribute and each year attribute is again a hierarchy you know you know that each and every attribute is a hierarchy under calendar dimension we have a calendar year member okay in that i wanted to display all members so by default it will not give you that members uh, members detail you have to type in dot members so this will give you all the members under that particular attribute called calendar year in the date dimension okay on which axis you wanted to uh, represent access zero or one i can simply put one here now i will click execute again excellent uh, i am able to see the result um so now you are able to um, in, um, see from 2005 to 2010 whatever it may be so here you might get one doubt actually if you write it in sql you will not get this in sql you will get only the inner joint but here if you see it gets a left outer joint when i say left outer joint even though there is no matching for 2010 there is no record for a 2010 you are able to return it. that means 
uh, it will give you entire list of members in the calendar dimension. So this is a default behavior here. So if you want it, you can keep it. If I don't want this null, if I want only the uh, calendar uh, information where you have some sales in, in it. So how to do that? There is one keyword called non-empty. So whatever I am telling, these are all the most frequently used, um, um, you know, constructs or uh, functions. So I, I'll be only talking about uh, the, the, those most frequently used. So for that to remove nulls, I will use non-empty keyword against dimension. Okay. So what this will do? This will eliminate the nulls. Nulls. Um, this will eliminate the members where it has nulls in the sales amount, internet sales amount, okay. I'll simply execute that, okay. Perfect, you are able to see that, okay. This is one, okay. Again, you might get one more doubt, like now I am able to see um, by calendar wise. So what if I, uh, can I mention something in columns, some extra fields can in columns? Let's try, like now we have only internet sales here. I wanted to have um, geography in the column, geography wise uh, sales amount in the column. So how to do that? Okay, let's go and get the, uh, go and find uh, what is the related uh, geography dimension here. So in this case you might get one uh, doubt here. See, there is a sales as territory dimension and there is a geography dimension. So which one to use now? That is a little bit confusion. So that is why if you select uh, internet sales, you will get uh, the related dimensions here. So now my confusion has gone. So I am only connected to sales territory. Geography is, con uh, is there for another uh, member group. Okay. I will select the um, territory group here. I will slice it by geography. This time I will drag drop this one, not on, uh, yeah, this one, on columns. So as I told you, I have to put members here again. Okay. In this case, how to mention it here? It should be a comma separated. If you wanted to go with a multiple things, it is a comma separated and you have to enclose that with the parentheses. Sorry, I didn't get you, uh, Shrika. So to get the all members, it will not, by default, will, will, it will not give you all the members. It will give you the de definition of that at dimension. So definitely to get the members un un under that particular attribute, you have to mention our members here, members in that attribute. It will give only the definition till the attribute level. But to get all the members inside it, you have to mention members. Okay. So now it should be comma separated. Since I have used more than one um, uh, one parameter here on the axis zero, I have used comma separation and I have closed, enclosed that with parenthesis. Okay. Let's see how my result comes. Yes, if you see here, you are able to see that now, the intersection. So 2005 Australia, how much and the uh, so this this kind of uh, intersections can be done using comma separation and enclosing that with the parenthesis. Okay, okay. You might get one more uh, doubt also. So I can only view only one uh, uh, sales amount. Why why don't if I wanted to use another uh, uh, value also? How to do that? Let's see. Another value. Let's say uh, you wanted to see. No, dimension, dimensions and measures are both are different uh, stuff. Dim dimensions are like master, the master data we have, uh, measures are like we have in, uh, in, in this group, whatever you have in this group is called measure.
you know the best way to learn is and is to have uh, hands on on this uh, hands on and write some queries then only you will have more and more doubts and more and more questions on it yeah so measures and dimensions are the, you know both are completely different uh, parts that we are talking measures are whatever you are seeing on the on on this group is called measures but we can have the intersection of measures as, as well as the dimension intersection so intersection is and australia internet uh, sales amount is just the intersection in that point of intersection what is the amount you have is this one it's okay it's okay sir can no problem okay one in the cube solution you are talking right okay these are the measures that we have and these are the dimensions that we have measures these are all the dimensions that we have and these are all the measures so these are all fact tables if you see if you see here and go to the properties the id is fact internet says one and how it is tied each of these attributes are tied to the fact table source is internet sales fact order quantity these are all the this is the actual source data for this particular measure but these these are the dimensions which have a different tables all the dimensions tables are tied to this particular member this particular dimension here so you understand no so these fact these, these are all the fact table data fact table data are converted to measure group all the dimension table data yeah group of fact one fact table is called one measure group inside each measure group we have fact each an individual facts like numeric value uh, let's say in 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 internet sales measure group that means the fact table in in your in, in our case uh, internet sales fact group measure group we have individual attribute internet order quantity as one attribute that means it's a one single fact we call that as a measure this is a measure group and this is a measure okay this measure is like underlying there is one column associated associated with this particular measure that is called fact you see here internet sales fact table there is a column called order quantity that order quantity is constituted to this one internet order quantity fact measure yeah so that uh, that means bala like oh, one fact table is called as a measure right that's what you are saying one measure, measure group. group yes so fact table is, is uh, we are calling as a measure group yes correct okay so we fact have multiple table. fact tables where yeah, if you see here in the in the in this um, structure here all the yellows are called fact tables all the yellows are fact tables that means measure group in indirectly we call in cube we call it as a measure group why we okay. call it as a measure group why we not call it as fact table is if you call it as a fact table that means you might get the idea that only the members in the fact table is the will be present in that but now it that is not the case we can have uh, calculations also that is why we call that as a measure group in that group we have uh, directly uh, direct fact and we have calculated fact also okay when i say fact it is measure under each measure group we'll have measure calculated measure and normal directly uh, direct measures also okay we have multiple fact tables here multiple measure groups here okay yeah actually i have one more basic question like yeah. which data will go in as a measure group or fact table and which data will go in as a dimension okay is that? that is where that is where your dimensional modeling comes into picture you have to segregate your data like that all the transaction data will be considered as a fact table transaction data means let's if you consider your sales data model or sales um, scenario for example like uh, retail sales 
all daily will be transactions will be logged in okay so transaction 1 the product 1 how many how many products has been sold what is the amount that total cash everything will be transactions daily you will get the transactions so that is called a fact table here so every day data will be loaded and the dimension table is you have in the product uh, product column we have a foreign key here and product all the products will be there in another table but that is called a master table so all the master tables can be considered as dimension tables and uh, all the transaction details and all numeric values wherever you find numeric values and you wanted to slice it by using dimensions those those numeric values can be considered as a fact table that is a simple way of identifying facts and dimensions okay Okay. Okay. I got it. Yes. Okay. This is little bit uh, that you have. We wanted to uh, scrub it on. What is uh, dimension and what is fact in the uh, dimension modeling concepts? Uh, how to dimension model? How to segregate dimension files and how to then segregate fact tables? So, simple, simple way to remember it here is all the transaction level data will be there in fact table, and the, all the master data will be there in dimension tables. Okay, so yeah, in other way, like um, in uh, major uh, major group or whatever, the fact tables will have only the integer values, I believe, right? Integer numeric values, integer, but no, but no, 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 Uh, let me show you back that one. You see, there are a lot of columns in that. Uh, one second. Lot of columns in that fact table. But only thing is, when you when you create a major group out of that fact table, it will only pick the um, only pick numeric values. Okay, it will eliminate the other values. It will not even consider uh, the where car values or n car values wherever you find you know some string. You will not. Use that to calculate measures. Okay. Okay. So measures. Yeah, if you see here in data warehousing, you can see that uh, all yeah. fact table, fact internet sales will contain all the keys, and it has some uh, all the money values, money. It has float. It has you know integer values and everything. All these n care values will be. Eliminated out of the measure group. Okay. 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 So you might get one more question. So how did I get this information into Cube now? So you say I said you can eliminate this, right? You can. Uh, you, uh, this will be automatically eliminated if you create a measure group out of this measure group out of this fact table. Then how to get this data into the Cube? That is where degenerated dimension comes into picture. So we can create a dimension out of this fact table. to get this uh, you know this this these details all all and where get details if you want to show that in cube you can use that as a degenerated dimension okay okay so degenerated dimension yeah yeah you have shown that yeah yeah okay okay yeah thank you okay yeah this, this is very important like uh, the first Uh, thing like dimensions and maybe understanding of these two things as a core for building your SSA cube. So when you when you get the requirements from the user, the first and foremost question that you have to ask them is what is the fact that you wanted to use and what are the dimensions that you are looking for. That is the first question that you have to ask uh, business. Um, even though if it is not at that terms like the fact and dimension terminology. You can ask for which numeric data or which uh, you know values that you wanted to slice by. So that way you can ask them questions. So if they wanted to see a uh, number of uh, shipment count by product by product by shipment count or one or um, in my case it happens like that. So what they want what number of contracts that uh, that sold on uh, 2014. So how how do how do they want the data? So when I start this dialogue with them, they they. told me like uh, i wanted to do this kind of use case uh, using cube that that is uh, that is how we have developed the you know requirement so i will talk about those requirement analysis and requirement gathering part 
in uh, tomorrow maybe tomorrow yes tomorrow is the last session for ss a so i'll talk about that tomorrow okay so we have written a simple query now uh, which has uh, internet sales amount only so what if if i want uh, uh, other uh, items also in the same message let's say now it is internet sales amount I'll, i wanted to have total standard product cost okay what to do with i'll just drag and drop in between sales amount or or, or even in the, in the beginning also what only thing you have to specify comma remember that members is uh, only applicable for dimensions not for measures measures will not have any members remember and dimensions only will have members so for each and every attribute we have members inside it so but for measures we don't have so that is why it, it is not required to mention members okay now i have uh, inserted standard product cast into the uh, into my column factor so let me run it again okay there is a problem one second Oh, little syntax needs to be changed here. One second, we have to enclose this with. Forward braces. Let me try it again. Yeah, little syntax change. All these measure groups. See, if you see here, measure and measures will be enclosed in flower braces. I see. Uh, the reason is. these two measures are from same hierarchy same hierarchy in the sense same measure group okay so that is why you have to enclose that with a flower braces um this concept whatever i am talking is related to tuples and sets which i will be explaining in just a moment from from now for now we have to enclose that with a flower braces so that it can be work if you see now here same thing for each and every attribute for australia Australia, uh, we have two things here. Let me. See here, Australia is repeated twice here. Australia internet uh, standard product cost for Australia is there. Uh, so if you wanted to, you know, change the order, you can do that. Now, um, I will. Okay, I'll change the order. Let's see here. Yeah, As you see here. The first one is the sales or I mean uh, territory country. For Australia, internet, uh, internet. Uh, I mean uh, product cost and uh, sales amount has been some. For Canada, same thing. Okay, this way you can have multiple, uh, um, multiple dimensions and measures can be joined together. This the comma separation will be called as join here. Like 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 we have inner join, uh, inner join, cross join, method join in in, in normal uh, SQL server. We have the join also. Sir, we have only one join that is called cross join. We can have the cross join using comma or we can use star also. Okay, if you use star also, not a problem. You can use comma either a star to have that cross join functionality. So what is cross join? So every member in the in in this uh, you know. um sales territory attribute will be joined with the measure that you have mentioned in this case. so what what will happen for australia we you have to join twice one is with a product cost one other one is sales amount for same thing canada you have to join twice you know product cost and sales amount so that way you, you will have cross join when you use a comma or star okay now we'll be we'll talking little bit about tuples and sets so what is tuple and what is set 
okay okay so now i will uh, uh, i will eliminate uh, that one that part here i will i will put only one one uh, one measure and one um what do you call uh, country or country attribute country number here so in that case you get the results here okay fine so the tuple is a tuple is nothing but i have a slide for that let me go back to that slide and explain that it is just like defining the location in the cube it is just like a coordinates so coordinates in the cube wherein the tuple will be enclosed with the parenthesis that just, that's what i have just done okay and the rule for this tuple is it, the members should be from a different dimension different dimensions of different entities so that is the rule for this uh, uh, tuple let's say you in, in a normal geometry geometry in mathematics you have to define a location in the three dimensional cube we, how will you do that you have to define the point in x axis you have to define a point in y axis and z axis as well so similarly in cube also if you want to get to that particular cell when you when i talk about cell a measure a measure uh, you have to use use it like a point what is the dimension value in the one axis what is the other dimension value and what is the um third dimension value so that's where you have to mention the point exactly to reach to that point that that uh, analogy in cube is called as tuple so that's what i have done here if you see here i wanted to go for exactly to that location um instead to remove the confusion i will i will eliminate this uh, from the product class uh, sorry the countries member here and i'll use that here okay okay now i'll i'll run it again okay to get the result actual point you have to you, now i have given the tuple called uh, first is a calendar year tuple and uh, calendar year number and second one is sales territory number so these remember these two are from different dimensions so even in, only in that case i will use tuple otherwise i have to use something else i will talk about that later okay instead of members let's say you wanted to use only for 2005 sales data how how to do that uh let me go back and data uh, mention calendar yes i have only 2008 let's talk about 2008 and just dragging the 2008 and uh, and sales dimension also i wanted to see only for australia okay okay now it is a simple tuple this is simple coordinate here so what this will written this will written a product standard product cost of uh, cost for 2008 and australia region this is a simple coordinate that we have in that coordinate what you wanted to see is uh, product cost if you see yes this is a simple coordinate that we have given so this is called a tuple uh, tuple can have you know multiple uh, multiple coordinates as well uh, multiple coordinate means uh, any number of dimensions now we have a day dimension and um, territory i mean geography dimension you can also have uh, product as well let's talk let's say in product categories you wanted to see bytes okay now i'm executing it okay simple simple intersection point that you are getting so now i have used only one member here okay what if if i use all member it will it will get the intersection for each and every it will have a cross join with all the um, dimension that you specified here and it will get the intersection and the rule for this tuple is you cannot have uh, 2008 and 2009 in the same tuple 
so we cannot identify that right in, in normal situations in, even in geo, geometry also in any any coordinates you can you cannot have same axis repeated twice in the same uh, same coordinate so x axis and x axis value and x axis value cannot be repeated for x axis we have we can only have one value right so that is the analogy here you can only have one dimension i mean uh, uh, dimension value cannot be repeated here you can only have one value per dimension so now if i use um, so remember earlier i used the numbers now i will use all numbers just to give that uh, difference see now we get if i use all numbers it will also include all all, all periods remember i have told you when you create a uh, uh, attribute it will start with the all and then it will fall back fall on um, the remaining values so if you wanted to see all members also all all level also you can specify all members otherwise you have to go down one level and mention members so that is how you the list of the query works so this is how uh, you know tuple works then what is set Uh, okay set is uh, nothing but if you wanted to have uh, dim values from the same dimension okay twice in that case you will go for set set uh, for, uh, tuple you have to use parentheses but for set you have to use uh, square braces okay um let's say you have to have uh, product cost now you have to have a sales in the sales amount also in that case you have to mention that in set because both are from a same measure group okay so this is a set now okay this is the difference between a set and a tuple tuple uh, will have a different dimensionality and a set will it should be from a same dimension okay uh, let's see how it works uh, using where class i'll put a where class here Uh, I wanted to slice only for uh, um, let's say 2007 alone. this will uh, this should fail i guess this should fail this should fail yes uh, the reason is i have used a uh, uh, date dimension here as well as in a where class we cannot use uh, uh, both in axis as well as in a where class so that is one of the rules so for that i will remove this from the in from the the point and i will rerun again okay what this will give is this will only give the amount for 2007 details so what is if you want to have both 2007 and 2008 for mentioning 2007 and 2008 will this work definitely it will not work because these two constitutes a set okay for all sets we know that we have to enclose that with a braces parentheses sorry no flower brackets okay now it's okay yes now it will give me the results for 2007 and 2008 okay this is a simple way of using undates now how to have a dynamic calculation on, on on top of it for that we have one one concept called width we have one um, construct called width using that width width class you can calculate the members uh, how to calculate let's say we have a product cost and we have sales amount so what is missing here is uh, we, i cannot do anything with the cost and sales amount but i wanted to have some kind of value called prop, profit profit is nothing but sales amount minus the product cost is called profit so how to calculate that here so for that calculation you will go for width with with class with 
member is a syntax that you have to use with member what are, what you wanted to calculate you wanted to calculate measure measure dot um i would say profit as now you have to mention the formula here formula is total uh, sorry total sales amount minus total product cost okay this is a simple measure now i will use that uh, in, in in the axis zero again okay. the same calculated part okay um bala yeah yes uh, shikant uh, sorry to say but uh, this uh, whatever the, the index syntax uh, you are showing mm -hmm. uh, not even remember so have a request like i think uh, i think this needs a lab exercise um, uh, shikant so what i would suggest is just write some basic queries whatever uh, you know whatever i showed today or you can, you can go through the internet i'll provide you a link just go through some basic uh, queries and write down on your own then you'll get more and more doubts so that i can explain it later just remember what i'm using that's it like how to use a with member and just don't uh, you know um, uh, go with the, how to remember this number just for that you can go and search in internet you can get it but why i'm writing this with member and why i'm writing this you know parenthesis So just remember that alone. So to get the cross gen, I'm using this uh, tuple. To get the filter, I'm using this state. So just that, remember that alone. That is fine, I guess. No, no, no. What I mean to say is like, uh, um, it is enough. This uh, can you move on to the next topic, like uh, that mining, and um, yeah, in that you can you can get to more time in. Uh, explaining the real time scenario tomorrow that's what uh, mm -hmm. so ah uh, okay okay we i will do that uh, okay for other benefit yeah, yeah. other yeah. just benefit i have done this um so i have i planned uh, only this much i, I know if i go on on mdx it will just confuse you i have planned this much only on mdx so and and skipping that uh, skipping to the next topic so but data mining i will cover in next topic but it will, it will, it will not take much time but uh, i'll be concentrating more on the real time situations in the next class but today class i have a couple of topics left one is with um, calculations the other one with uh, name states and we have uh, deployments and how to deploy this uh, to production environment and all that topic on the topic and the last uh, topic is we have the security how to implement security so this is it i will i have planned for this uh, session for the, with with um, this query i have on binding of this mdx part okay what i would suggest is before before you know concluding our session uh, after ssrs will complete before that if you can start writing some mdx queries it mean well you get some questions we can get it verified during that time. so that is what i would suggest yeah 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 we'll do but um uh, we'll try that definitely i don't know whether we we'll get time but i will yeah the that. thing is ssa is mdx is a unique thing. you cannot find it uh, you know you will not find much of the ssa development in mdx developers across it is a unique skill if you learn it you are the unique person um you'll have that they you know they, you are asking about the market share uh, some other day right yes, the yes. entire uh, msda suit ssas and mdx the con i mean uh, the combination of these two is having highest market share the combination so oh. if you know these two things yeah you you have a good opportunity to trade them um so th that's how it works and uh, right. if you know the, the, any any two things in this code will help you ssis and ssrs or ssas and ssrs 
so these these, these things uh, this any two uh, will be help for you okay okay so ssas along with the mdx uh, will be helpful uh, very much very much helpful mdx that's what um, uh, i'm saying you will not find much of the mdx developers whenever you interview any person uh, done lot of interviews uh, we have specifically put in the requirement saying okay we want mdx developers and ssas developers so everybody whatever we get the resume they will only be experts in building the tool but not the querying with you so that is where we are lagging here so just go on concentrate on this uh, mba this is not only used to write mba on top of ssa it can be spanned across it you can write mba on top of uh, hyperion um, any anywhere you go any ba solution any overlap solution you can write mba so that is how it works even in other There are various projects also you can write. I'm um, sorry. Your yeah, wife. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can also you can write MDX. It is just a long way. Uh, it can be supported by multiple OLAP systems from different vendors. Not only from Microsoft, we can write uh, the same MDX on top of uh, uh, SAP NetBeaver. But only thing is, you might get little bit changes in the uh, these constructs. Instead of space, you will not have space there. so that kind of changes you'll get but the concept wise everything is same we have the uh, tuples we have sets we have access there also you can uh, slice it so the same way it will work in any environment so and one and more important thing yeah sorry go go ahead mala sorry one more important thing that we wanted to uh, i wanted to tell i'm telling this every time when i take this ms i mean uh, mmd session um you have to uh, forget sql before learning unlearn sql and learn mdx that's how we will we'll tell uh, um, our uh, participants our, our learners here the reason is if you think in the sql lines sql will have uh, comma separated columns and from querying from table if you think that way you cannot write this and you have to think like you know tuples sets coordinates cells so in that way you have to think so that is a unlearn skill first don't forget about the skill for for a moment and then think about this skill and it so that's how we have to learn okay okay and uh, what is the practical usage of this one number like uh, where do we yeah. exactly use um first thing uh, is writing uh, reports from cube okay uh, right. if i say go ahead and develop a report from connecting to cube then how will you do that you have to write a query you have to get the data set and then bind the data set to your report your report viewer or report uh, report uh, parameters so that's how it works so getting the data sets we have to know this mdx so But, uh, that is the one yeah yeah i got that one point but now um, in other way in some probably sometimes we need to write a query but can't we directly connect like uh, um, uh, in crystal report if you take a crystal report we directly connect to the existing table in the database right yeah in the table you can directly connect uh, but but whereas in in case of this mdx we cannot directly connect that way you have to write some kind of query to get the result that is the difference between the connection connecting to sql and connecting to um mdx uh, sorry uh, cube you have to write some queries to get in, get connected to the uh, cube be it a very simple query or it is a complex query but you have to write some query a direct connection to a table cannot work in Oh my god okay so what is the other and, and, even, and uh, for now i think you you might be using adivo.net or some some uh, in, uh, in uh, data access layer to connect to database using dotnet right adivo.net yes. yes but for this uh, we have another uh, provider called adivo md.net uh huh so using that we have a specific construct to write the index queries and get the results and show it in your client applications wherever it is so without uh, any
yeah without mbx uh, you cannot write uh, no you cannot connect to the cubes so that is the basic point here oh okay so it's a must simple be it a sim yeah be it a simple query but you need to have some kind of mbx you cannot uh, go drag and drop or something but there is an interesting feature you can you you don't have to write uh, the query this complex query let's see um how to dynamically uh, it will it will give you a query for you um that's what i will i want to tell that point also please please give me one second how to write that query so you, you are having some struggle with writing the query simple query uh, you want to, you have some trouble in that case you can uh, just drag drop whatever the fields that you wanted and you can uh, generate uh, uh, mdx dynamically how to do that uh, is i am i'm testing it somewhere i have tested it let me see how can i dynamically generate that uh, query for you so i'm using excel to connect to my cube and uh, um, generate whatever the data set i want here after that Mm. Let's say I want uh, the same again. Um, by product category. Okay, this is it. Um, how to do that? Uh, is my question. Please bear with me. You have you have the question right? How to write? Um, I mean, uh, why do I need to write um, queries and all? So you can get the queries out of it directly. Just the moment. I I think there is a way to generate that uh, uh, MDX dynamically. i will tell uh, sri gan that maybe tomorrow uh, i will i will tell that uh, so what what we can do is to the, the basic query will be written so whatever you drag drop here it will automatically uh, write a query okay and copy the query and you can use it in uh, your client application whether it be crystal reports or it can be using the uh, adomd.net you can use that query uh, but there is a way to export that query but i don't Uh, remember I, where exactly i can go and get that query uh, but i will tell tell about this will be important for you yes for mdx uh, whoever having some struggle with mdx they can go with this approach to generate some queries for them okay 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 there are, there are some client tools uh, which will generate a dynamic query for you even in ssrs i think uh, you have the drag drop functionality uh, drag drop functionality just drag and drop it will dynamically generate a query for you um, but i'm not sure about that i have to uh, check in ssrs we have i know that in ssrs i connecting to cube instead of direct go and writing select or uh, select the dimension measures and everything you just have a measures and dimension drag drop you can you can create a data set for you it will automatically dynamically create the query for you there is a query builder in uh, ssrs but not sure about the other client tools but whereas with the crystal reports and uh, this one um, uh, adio md yes you have to write uh, nda instead of writing you can go and export a mdx from here so that's what uh, i can i can see. okay the no i was actually asking about the ssrs on the side so SSRS. Um, if you ha- if I have to create a report, then I can. Yes, yes. Do- I think there is there is a query builder there. Query builder is there. Query builder dynamically it will build a query for you based on your selection. Yes. Okay. And what is the practical way to do? I mean, practical way. Uh, pra- practical way. First initial data set will be created from drag and drop. Later on, for any minor changes, if you wanted to have uh, your custom. Uh, calculations um 
So all those any customizations will be done at the query level. Okay, but initially when you start your query, when you start building your data set, just go with uh, we will go with a data set alone. I mean, drag and drop functionality. Okay, okay, yeah, that's what. Thinking because the um, usage wise, if there is no drag and drop, uh, how many people are going to use this query and all that stuff? So. Yeah, there there is a drag and drop function. Yes, it's ours. Okay. 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 So, uh, we'll yeah. SSRS also okay will be used by the developers, right? Not the business users, right? Development yeah. of SSRS will be done by um uh, as uh, uh, obviously developers, but users, yeah, it it will be used by end users, not the business users. We have two kinds of users here. One is the business users, one is the end users. Business users is nothing but um, for them they will we will be giving this ad hoc reporting. Okay, they, wherever they want, they can uh, drag and drop. They can see whatever the major values that they want. But for end user, they want one kind of report, a static report. So the, for them, they'll be using SSR. We'll be giving SSR reports. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I'll be skipping to next topic. Next topic for for us is uh, we have roles. Roles. We have. I mean, I thought of. Cal, I mean, covering these calculations as well. Uh, since I have already covered that in uh, in NDX, so we have got one one calculation. Let's quickly see what the calculations does. So instead of writing the calculation in our end, uh, we have written it using with statement in our end, right? Instead of writing there, if we can calculate in the cube itself and put it there for the users, they can directly go ahead and uh, drag drop it. So that is where if we wanted to calculate gross profit. See here, there is an uh, expression that you wanted to give here. Um, a sales amount minus the product cost will give you the um, gross profit. So this kind of calculations can be kept at the cube level itself, uh, which will you know eliminate the users to write uh, their own MDX to calculate few things. And these are the supporting properties that we have to like formatting uh, whether to make it visible to the users or not. And if there is a empty empty thing empty uh, things for uh, if it returns a null value in that case what has to be uh, uh, what has to be, what has to be displayed to the user in in this case my non empty behavior should be uh, either sales amount or a product cost if it is if it is returning null value in that case I have to provide this so where I need to keep this calculation under under which measure group I wanted to keep so all those things are support active, supporting purpose i can i can i can make the changes here so apart from the calculated measure so this is called calculated measure apart from the calculated measure we also have one thing called named set so what is named set so always user wanted to see top selling product so every time he has to write query using this top count or or based on Based on you know this calculation, they have to done at their own. So instead, why don't we put uh, you know a name would set? A set is nothing but uh, the members from the same dimension. So here, uh, this set will return the members from the product dimension, and this is that this is based on the sales amount. If sales amount is uh, you know it it will be sorted by uh, descending order, max showing from the maximum to minimum. In the top 25 will be returned from this count. So this is called a named set. Similarly, if you see here, you have named in top 25 selling products or top 50 products, top 50 uh, when customers we have, we have the negative margin product. This will be useful for them. If you see, uh, we have a lot of functions, filter functions they have used. If the profit is less than zero, gross margin profit is less than zero, in that case they can discontinue those products. This will help them, negative margin products. Um, uh, set. So this way you can say you can have a name of sets as well as um, calculated m members in the cube itself. This will avoid writing rewriting the MDX by customers. So we can keep it in the cube level. Okay. So this is it about the calculations. So later part uh, what we have is the security. 
so this is the most important uh, part in cube building the uh, security by default the people whoever have access to the analysis server will be having uh, will be able to access this cube but uh, in, uh, in mostly in enterprise environment we have to have a security access it should not be easy uh, it should not be given to everybody to access across the i mean across the organization only the specified member should have access that to uh, let's say a few set of users should have only access to americas region data and few set of users only will have access to um, uh, emea region and few set will be apj region so apj should not view the other two regions data that is that is a security or you know violation so in that case how to set these roles in cube level okay we can set this we have a tab uh, we have a folder called uh, roles in the solution itself where you can right click and create a new role <coughs> in that role you can uh, specify so who are all the users that needs to get access uh, for only this role okay now i will if i wanted to use a full control to that role i can specify but i don't want to give full control or even not the, the processing database access i just want to give the read definition access and you can specify in this let's say i'll use um, uh, only uh, australia I'll, i'll i'll give that only australia can australia people australia members can access this in members i will specify who are all the users um, that needs access for australia data alone i'll uh, specify here using all since i don't i'm not connected to any network i will not get okay that's okay i will not give any member here data source access just read access i need to give and uh, we have two cubes here which cube you need to give access i need to give access to adventure work local cube or drill through drill through access, access you need to give or local cube local cube means they can download the entire cube into their machine so that access i'm not giving uh, i will be giving only drill through access drill through access and processing uh, option i'm not giving okay just just uh, giving the high level read access alone cell data you can you can you can specify the security at even a cell level okay but i'm not changing anything here what i wanted is i wanted to restrict the dimension uh, data alone so everything i am i'm putting the read uh, so half of every dimension you will be having access if you go to the dimension data this is where i have to specify uh, access to so we have a drop down here which will list uh, all the dimensions in that cube and all the it is a database dimension and the cube dimension in that cube dimension we know i have to give only access to um our australia region in that case i will select the sales territory sales territory has has that uh, you know information about region sales territory in this uh, manually deselect uh, deselect or uh, to deny okay i will only give access to australia okay i will only give access to australia in advance tab i uh, will not change anything okay i will go ahead and deploy um bala yeah what is the other access level read write uh, read write is like uh, so far we have seen only the reading part of uh, cube right whenever you made a change in the dimension uh, it, it if we if we give that access read write access it will take back to the database also we can write the data into database also so that part i haven't tell that is little bit of advanced concept so that is why i did not cover it so if you enable a, a right a right a right option uh, if you change the australia here uh, to australia uh, australia country or australia something it will be automatically reflected in the database also in the underlying data store i'm talking about data warehouse okay it will reverse also 
So far, so far we have only seen the reading part, right? If you click on, if you enable the read write part, you can write it back to data source also. For that, you have to make some other settings in the dimension level. But uh, do we do that? Like, uh, this whatever we do that because uh, we will not have any control on data warehouse. When once you get the cube, um, in most practical situations, data source, data warehouse. Nobody else will have the right access. Only the EPL will have access to write the data, change the data. So we normally yeah. will not do write back. Yeah. Yeah. So in practical scenario, we never do that, right? We'll never do that. And what is the other option like processing? Sorry. There is one more like a checkbox. Like yeah. Process. Processing. Uh, processing. Uh, um, Processing. If you want manually process the cube, if suppose a user from any Australia group or any any other group wants to manually process it, go and go open open your system mesh and right click and process. So if you want to do that, that processing database will be enabled for you. But most probably manual manually people will not process. There will be automated process that will take care of the processing. Right. Only for that user account. From where that you know the SSI package is accessing the cube, only that user account will get access to the processing. Individual, what? individual. I'm yeah. not getting what in the processing. That's processing means refreshing your cube data from it picks data okay. from data warehouse and puts it into OLAP. Okay, okay, refreshing the cube you mean? Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's processing. We call it as a processing uh, cube. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, now it is process. Let's go back and view it in the browser session. Okay, next. Okay. Let me quickly change the role. Let me quickly change the role here. You can change the role to test it. Okay, I'm changing the role. Just remember, I'm I'm going here next to the processing symbol. I have this change user. Go to roles. So I have another role just now I created. Okay. Okay. So now what I will do? I will just drag that country region. Or country or region, region right? So in this, you can only see Australia here. So that is what uh, you know. We can we can restrict the um, restrict the data from the dimension. Okay. Do you get any doubt looking at the screen? Um, I have changed the role and I have drag drop this uh, sales territory region. And I'm able to see that sales amount, but if you see the grand total, still you are able to see that uh, total grand total. I mean, uh, for other regions' data also, you are seeing, which is uh, like which is not required at all. I mean, we have to uh, eliminate these uh, totals, grand totals. Uh, we have to fix it to nine nine million only. Uh, how to do that? There is a simple setting in that uh, we, that we have missed it uh, last time. It's not missed. Uh, Bontedly did that. If you in the same same uh, uh, tab in the dimension data security tab, in the advanced, if you go advanced, there is a option to uh, enable visual totals. Okay, in that enable, if you click that, um, it will automatically change the totals, uh, to grand totals to um, 30 million. I mean, uh, to 9 million. Whatever we have for only Australia will be shown. Okay. So that is uh, that is what uh, the enable visual total means. Okay, so this uh, this is a quick uh, quick thing about the security. Security, we can still do many things, many many things. Um, like we can write, we can enable uh, your own roles. Like um, you, you can allow the member side. You can deny uh, whatever that is not required. What is the default member you wanted to display? You can have multiple, you know, multiple attributes to be defined. So that that way you can have the security defined. And I told you perspectives and security. There is a difference. Uh, you cannot use perspectives for um, uh, you know for security things. If you want to hide particular dimension 
for a user uh, in that case you cannot use perspectives for uh, that purpose you will only use this 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 role stack to define that security so that is what the you know summary information that i wanted to give you so apart from this roles we also so now the cube is ready and developed everything is tested for that now i wanted to deploy that to one of the environment so how to do that so far we are deploying using the bits on bits like if i click on this what is happening it is going to that particular server deploying and getting the result uh, which server it is going i will right click on the, if i right click on the screen go to the properties right click on the solution and go to properties and there is a deployment tab here to see i can specify mem, uh, server and database name here so so far when i click on this button this uh, start debugging button uh, it is deploying to the local host to local server and the database name is same adventure works dw r r2 so what if i wanted to develop, uh, deploy it to one of the production server or itg server or development server simple i can change i can change the server name here Uh, your own server name like uh, like x x x one two three four dot. Uh, uh, this is the fully qualified name that you want to give. Like normally it will be Houston dot hp dot com. So this this is how we'll have that server name and the database name will keep it same. Okay. If you click OK, it will automatically go ahead and de deploy into your target machine. here before deploying you have to make sure uh, make sure you have to put it the do not process it do not process in the sense if i if i select this option it will only deploy the structure uh, it will not have the data any data inside that whole structure now so why the reason is uh, the local machines will be deploying in our local machine if i start processing from local machine it will be very slow data has to come from Uh, server uh, data warehouse to your local machine then push it to olap server so that is a time taking process so what you will do just initially you will only deploy the structure after deploying structure uh, as i told you you will use any of the schedule uh, uh, ssis package or uh, uh, ssis package normally we will use ssis package to process your cube process in the sense cube refresh with the data so that is how uh, this is the one way of deployment like uh, using bits environment but but most probably we will not be allowed to use bits to deploy just one second uh, just one second i'll okay so so most probably we will not use this deployment technique there are only times when we use this uh, deployment is before uh, you know the production servers going into live in that case you will have full access on production servers in that case you can play whatever you want once the production server goes into live and you will not have access to those production servers or um, itg servers somebody else have to do the deployments for you Mm, and they might not have any this visual studio to deploy we cannot give entire solution to them to deploy so what in that case what you have to do then is other technique the other technique is so now you have deployed to your local machine fine so where is, uh, so where is that uh, server uh, let me go to that local server object explorer yeah this is my local server and you see that database here now you wanted to deploy this to itg server so how to do that you right click on that there is option to script database as and there is option to create to create to new query window perfect it is trying to generate some you know some script for you that is a create script for entire database entire database uh, in the sense it has all the dimensions apis everything uh, will be generating using the script that is why it is taking little bit amount of little amount of time okay what uh, it is trying to generate is a xml a script what is xml a xml for analysis it is kind of it looks like xml a 
it is not not a uh, normal uh, xml it will be only fine tuned for analysis services so that is why you have xml a script generated for you so as i told you mdx will be used for querying your uh, um, querying your uh, tube information but xml a will be used for uh, taking care of admin related like uh, creation of uh, creation of uh, dimension modifying dimension modifying database so all those uh, things can be done using um, xml a script so that is what it is trying to generate for me it is trying to generate a xml a script for me bala uh, yes shikant uh, uh, how do you maintain uh, uh, this uh, i mean uh, this scripts or uh, whatever the files and uh, source control do you use source control or not for this kind of yeah thing? we do we do use we can we can maintain that using tfs um, source control or uh, you know svn so wherever you want you can you can maintain this solution entire solution you can maintain it in source control Oh, okay, but uh, how do you do in uh, your regular daily? Uh, uh, regular, we have TFS installed. Uh, like, like mm-hmm. we have a checking checkout in normal, uh, you know, uh, in dot .NET. Uh, what what we have in, in your dot .NET, you'll have a regular checking checkout in T- with TFS or SPN, right? The same way, you'll yeah. we'll have solution checking checkout every day. And only missing part here is you cannot have uh, what you call as uh, continuous integration system. with with this uh, bi solutions sorry sir i cannot hear you that properly what is that there is a continuous integration part cannot be used for bi solutions whereas the continuous integration will be used for normal dot net applications uh, whether it is windows or a web based application you can have that that in a continuous integration mode so when i say continuous integration uh, you are aware of that continuous integration we have cruise control dot net or no what is that continuous integration you are saying yeah every time when you check in the code uh, in the background there will be a process which will build your code uh, and checks whether uh, your your code is a um, uh, in non breakable code or it will break your entire uh, existing solution so that part will not be there for ba but whereas if you consider normal traditional dot net application will have the continuous build like every time every any any person checked in checked in the code to the source control uh, it will automatically um, builds builds that um, code if there is any breaking uh, changes it will report back to you so that part is not there for bi solutions oh okay okay even that is not there for uh, for dot net also um, probably that um, maybe dot net is there i guess i think it is there for tfs okay. if you sir Which source control you are using? No, no. What I'm saying, well, uh, that feature might be there in TFS, but uh, we we are not even using that. So probably in big companies oh, okay. that stable, but uh, in yeah, companies. all the products. If you are developing a product uh, from a .NET application, like you are developing one uh, big uh, website, a shopping website, and it is maintained some 50 users, so. to track those changes they'll be using this continuous build uh, process okay 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 so that part is not there i think it has stuck somewhere oh, it is going to non responding mode i'll use some other script for now i'll use okay. i will use um, the other other one ssh ssh demo which we have developed because it is a little small in size uh, script database query to it is a man went into non responding mode so what i'm trying to tell here is it will generate xml for you using that xml a you can you can pass this same xml a to your admin whoever uh, is responsible for for the deployment yeah you can see here you have generated the uh, create uh, script for your database queue it has entire relationship everything database measure group everything in in a nutshell in, uh, all the development that so far we have done is uh, is captured in the xml here. okay we will pass this xml file to the um, either it is um, admin who have access to uh, you know 
that environment a production environment wherein he can open the same uh, management studio from his mission you can connect to the server and then he can run this he can run this uh, server and this in in production mission you can connect to production mission and he can run okay and uh, you might have asked some other question like how to make the configuration changes so so far we have developed using local database and local uh, uh, deployed to local mission now it should be a production database in that case you have to traverse through the xml here xml and see where that exact uh, connection string you can change it before giving it to the before giving it to the you know admin the the, the person who is responsible for that uh, deployment so you are clear on this deployment so once you deploy that code you will have the skeleton ready and uh, we cannot do anything with the skeleton you cannot get the data out of it so you have to process it okay how to process you can directly process it uh, using process in the sense refresh here you can directly process once the cube is ready so for now i will use the same thing and i'll deploy here i'll change the names here id is 2 and uh, name to 2 and i will run it let's see so it is trying to create um uh, database another database in the same local machine so now i since i am connected to local machine instead if i connect to the production environment i would have uh, created a project there itself so i'm refreshing it okay so see a new demo to has been created so it is now just a skeleton if you go and see and see the properties you will have uh, no processing time it is size is zero So how to process the cube entire cube now just right click and there is option to process it if you click a process if you click on process this is called manual processing okay if you click on processing it will automatically pick the data from the data warehouse and puts it into ola so it is still processing so generally we will not do this manual processing only for testing purpose we will do this manual processing uh, we, we have to schedule it somewhere uh, we will use generally ssis uh, packages to process the queue see processing is done even for the past time also we don't do this manually no uh generally no because um if you do the processing from your machine then if your cube size is on tb 1 tb or 2 tb what it has to do it has to get the data from server put it into your local process it and push it into olar system so that is how no, it will no. happen right No, no, no. I'm not talking about local. Uh, whoever the admin, once he run that uh, XML ES script, mm. once that uh, cube has been created, what is the next? From from do? where he can process? From where? Uh, through the client application like this one only, right? Through yes. SSMS. SSMS. SSMS will not be there in your server, definitely. Okay, understand, right? we yeah. they will be only from your product, i mean admin mission only again again it is a local mission for for him uh even for them uh, data has to fetch to his mission and then to production environment so, oh, okay yeah okay generally it has to be scheduled long running query so it will run for uh, uh, 10 to 12 hours initial loading from then on if we put on process update it will only pick the updated uh, data um otherwise for the first initial run it will run for 10 to 12 hours in real time situation so that is why we will will avoid uh, using local machines for initial processing and if you have any servers located next in the same data center uh, let's say your database your uh, um, your analysis services and your uh, located in the same data center you will have a remote mission from the same data center in that situation install install this client application like uh, sms in in that uh, remote machine and you can manually process from there initially you understand you, you, you instead of using your local uh, laptop or local machine to do that you can use the machine from the same data center so that we can avoid that uh, network traffic and everything yeah 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 got it yeah i got it well thank you yeah so this is another way so so far we have seen two ways one is um using uh, normal bits this uh, i mean visual studio one is through xml ya the other thing is we have a wizard configuration wizard here 
if you go to all programs i need uh, another 5 minutes i'll just hold on um if you go to sql server r2 there is analysis service under analysis service you have a deployment wizard if you open that it will open the wizard for you so we have to give some files as input for this wizard to deploy it. what are those files so so far we are developing some query type right? some some so far we have developed the solution so where it is getting developed it is getting developed in one one of the your hard drive only so we have to go to that hard drive location uh, full path uh, i'll go to that uh, location where it is getting developed mm -hmm. so this is the location where we are developing this is the solution location if you go to the bin folder you will find uh, different uh, these, these files whenever you build or whenever you try to change these four files will be created and one is with a uh, one different files have different things. one have configuration one have all the target information and one have options and one have all the contents in it so we will use these files as a input files for the wizard okay database file okay first one first input is a database file how to say select uh, the ellipsis button i'll go to that location mm. See, it automatically picks the one file. We have the same same name files four times, but uh, it picks the analysis service database file. That is, the extension is AS database file. It automatically picks up that file. Click next. We have to configure uh, your server and database name here. So for now, I will use uh, test three because already uh, there is a one and two versions of it. I will use the test three. Click next. So what 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 you wanted to do with the partition and roles? You wanted to um, deploy all the partitions, or what what you wanted to do? Deploy partitions. I'll keep the rest of the settings the same. You want to deploy roles as well? Yes. The, if if you see the options here, um, for testing purposes, you might have added few members. So, but but for deployment, you will not use those members. Members, members, members. These are the list of people that needs to get access to this wall. So, while deploying, I need to eliminate those list of people. So, in that case, I will select this. So, if you eliminate those roles, then how those things will work after the deployment? No, no, no. Roles will not get eliminated. Roles will not get eliminated. Role will be there. There is a members inside that role for each role. For testing, oh. I might have used the few persons, right? uh right. i will not uh, use those persons in deployment and production around okay okay yeah so the same roles should be there in the production environment right exactly exactly okay. okay and do you use this so generally the... generally the scenario is like this um, we will not uh, use any individual members in that uh, member tab okay uh, we will not have hard code like uh, my my case it is Asia Pacific slash LED. Um, so in your case, it could be you know America slash Vietnam. So this, I will not use the individual names to specify in that membership tab in the role. Okay. What I will do instead, I will create a service account or uh, Active Directory group. We call it as Active Directory group. You are aware of this Active Directory group? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in that group, will uh, we will be. Um, grouping certain people and giving only access to that active directory group in that way um, to add a add a user to suppose in future somebody comes to you and okay i want access to this particular role so how will you do you have to go to the server open this and uh, open this in uh, ssms and you have to do all this stuff instead to avoid that uh, to avoid that you know 
um, uh, production environment changes, what you will do, you will give a one kind of group there. For that group, you can add uh, add the people to group, people to that group, and remove people to that group, and wherever you, whatever you can do using your your own client application. Some how to uh, mean that adding to Active Directory are different uh, process. You will not touch the production server. Okay. Okay. And uh, do you use this in real time? Like uh, these wizards are. Uh Yes, I have used SSA because I have full control on production environment most of the time. Uh, but in real time situations, we have to give this core file. Oh, okay. So the admin will take care of it. Yeah, admin will take care of it. Okay. In core file, we have to change this configuration and uh, everything. Configurations, whatever. I mean, related to if it is deployed to production, you have to give the configuration directly here, or you have to specify him or admin. to change the configurations while deploying so basically this these four files will also have the uh, schema means the delta one yeah yeah right. it, it has the a database file will have skeleton if you see 353 kb right it has a skeleton details and all other are just like you know options um, you want to deploy roles or member so those kind of options you have seen here just now Okay, so okay, so yeah, the file size or uh, the file size is very less, so that is. Uh, these these are all like configuration, three kb, two yeah, kb, one kb. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that is the reason these are only the skeleton files, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is it. I think. So, I think I don't. This is a very straightforward approach that you can give if you navigate through Wizard, you will be able to do it. So that's it uh, uh, for this. We have covered uh, you know, roles and deployment as well. So next class we'll be covering on uh, uh, mining a little bit about mining and uh, the real time use cases. How how we got the requirements and uh, how we end up with development of queue. Okay. 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 Yes. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining. So we'll see you on Tuesday again. Yes. Sorry. I will see you back on Tuesday morning. I mean, uh, Tuesday morning my time, and that means Monday, Monday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So Thanks. Bye. Bye.